What you looking at? Unchi. Mm -hmm. Unchi. <laughs> That means poo poo, you're so nasty. Why do you say that? Say, I'm looking at the beautiful sunset in the sky. <laughs> no, so a nasty boy. Are you making pancakes? What about poo cakes? Are you making no! pancakes? What are you mixing? Tamago. Tamago. Can I just eat the tamago? No. No. Here's one thing you might not know about my house. Look what I'm close to. These are love hotels. Do you know what gets made at love hotels? Let me show you what gets made at love hotels. Right down there, that's what gets made at love hotels. Now, okay, my son was not conceived at a love hotel. It was done in a very conservative, missionary-style way. It's already TMI, so I'm gonna stop there. But look at all these lovely uh, hotels. And if you take a look at this, you see this right here? You see how, like, the entrance, it's got, like, the, the billboard in front of it right there? You see that? Well, the reason that it has the billboard in front of the doors that you enter is so people can't take photos of two people entering. So, if you're cheating on your, well, other half, let's put it that way, then uh, you can hide it by going behind the billboard. Deceptive, right? So, today my big trip was out to the Umeda Sky Building. It's in the heart of Umeda. You can get right off the train and walk to an underground passage that leads you to it. You'll pop back out at the other side and then you have yourself 16 floors to go up at which point you switch elevators. You take a couple more floors up, you get to the top and it is beautiful. You ride this awesome sky escalator up. You can see the tunnel right here that it makes as you go up. You can see the entire city of Umeda down below as you gaze through the amazing tunnel windows allowing you to just see everything. It doesn't stop there. The best part is, is when you finally get to the top, you're in this circular dome type area in which you've got everything from shops to restaurants to just any type of sky view window you want to look out of such as binocular windows, even glass windows where you can stand on the edge and look down at where your feet are if you're brave enough. Then, even beyond that, if you want to go a little bit higher, you can climb the steps to the top, get onto the roof, and gaze off the top of this building, and it is gorgeous. It is cities for miles and miles and miles. It looks like this amazing cyberpunk landscape that just blows your mind. And then on top of that, it doesn't stop there. There's even a little bit more. As it becomes nighttime, find out the entire roof of the Umeda Sky building is covered in tiny glow-in-the-dark rubber pebbles. It sounds strange, but it looks incredible. They are not just one color of glowing pebble, but many, many purples and greens and yellows and pinks. So you have this amazing neon pathway that you walk around while looking out onto this kaleidoscope of color and just nighttime liquid black mixed with neon and it just looks incredible. Oh, so this week is a busy one once again, and it's because I'm finally figuring out the last little touches I need to put on a company before I open in March, and it mostly deals with the few employees I've hired. I've only hired two employees so far, a lesson and school coordinator, and a juku teacher. If you don't know what juku is, it's cram school. It's pretty much all the cramming that kids do to prepare for the giant junior high school entrance exams and high school entrance exams which are very difficult and require a ton of studying but there's special I guess hacks to it or workarounds and that's what you hire a teacher for these are very popular schools and people pay a lot of money for them and lucky for me a friend of my wife his dad is about to retire from doing that business and to help me out with starting mine, 
he's going to come in and teach that school for a salary less than what he would normally make. I told him right off the bat, I can't match what you're making right now. As a salaryman goes up in level through the different types of jobs that they do or the different levels of the same job that they do, their salary steadily increases so that they're making more than a living wage. They're actually starting to make a luxurious pay and I, I just can't match that. But pretty much what this is going to work out as as a way in which this guy can just work within his own parameters, his own teaching style, and he's his own boss. He has my full school at his disposal in which to do it. And my school actually finishes up at 7 p.m. Most of the school kids that I'm teaching are between kindergarten and elementary school age. They're not going to stay past 7 o'clock. They need to go home and eat dinner. The high school and junior high school kids that come in after come in at 7 p.m. and sometimes last till as late as 10 o'clock at some of these jukus that they study at. So that's where my school is at his disposal. He will do the teaching and I make a bit of profit because I split it pretty much with him, with the students that he has, and uh, it's win-win for both people. Okay, here's an update of what our place looks like now. You can see all the walls are finished, the floors are finished, nice and clean. Now these aren't, these aren't the actual lights, these are just still work lights, so these aren't going to be the ones that go in there, but you can see a lot, a lot of progress. Also, we got this diamond plating wall. It's really cool. Really sick looking wall. I love this. I chose this myself. And then we took off all that weird waxy paper on the windows. Take a look over here. We got this beautiful red wall now installed. All right. Just got to clean up that kitchen in a little bit. All right. Come over here. This is the only room that's not finished yet. But we did get one of the yellow walls finished over here. And we got that garbage, sticky, tacky stuff off the windows. You can see we're getting this cool type of owl wallpaper on here. And if you come over here, it's the blue room, I call it, because, you know, it's, it's all blue. Uh, next to the white, it looks really crisp. Oh, I love how it looks. Now, there's no lighting in here yet, so it looks really kind of dark. The only light you're getting is natural light from the sliding glass door, and we've got two of those. And then right here again, you're back to the yellow. This still needs to be changed out too. We're not going to keep this ugly wood. But if you remember just last week, I had that ugly brown wood wall, which I mean, you still got some of it over here, but that's going to get covered up. And uh, this is this is the wallpaper machine. I don't, I have no clue how this works. I will never touch any of the equipment that any of these guys have here because I see things going horribly wrong. Um, this area still needs to be changed out too. You can see not much has been done here. Um, but one good thing that we did do is if you can see right there, that's a laminator. We went to a place called Joshin. And you've probably heard of Joshin stores before. They're pretty much the equivalent to Big Camera. And we found a place called Joshin Outlet. And it is a garbage looking version of Joshin. But it's everything that's one year old in the stores and has been shipped to this outlet and the prices are freaking amazing. We bought two air conditioners, a beefy computer, all the other computers for our school. Um, we bought ourselves two laptops. Uh, we bought a shredder, a phone set, and that means like there's one base phone and then phones all around. And if you're wondering why we use landlines, you actually have to by law, if you open a business in Japan, you have to have at least one landline number. And what else did we buy? A couple more things. Oh, a tepra, which is like a labeler. Same thing. I don't, I don't know what you would call that in English because I never actually ever bought one or used one in English. Oh, a door camera. Because since we're running a school, you have to be a little more secure. As you can see, this whole area totally not finished yet. Um, but right here, we're going to have a door camera installed. That means when somebody rings a doorbell, before we would ever open it or see who's at the door, a camera would turn on and show us. And total for all of that that I just mentioned three thousand dollars that's it because it's the outlet store sick prices if you guys are ever starting a business here hit up a Joshin outlet they're usually known for like toys and electronics I never heard that they had outlet stores until I opened a business here and I am so glad I heard about this store man really important aspect I have no overhead at all um, I own these apartments outright I do not rent um, I really feel like when you open a business in Japan in a really expensive area like the one I'm in, you should probably just outright own the building that you're using your business in because otherwise it's, it's just going to be too outrageously expensive. If I were to put key money down and rent this place here or try to purchase it, put key money down and refurbish it, you're looking at almost half a million dollars. So 
you can see where that wouldn't be too feasible to get that paid off anytime soon, especially if we had to take a loan out to do it, which we would. Okay, that's where we're at with the school, and flyers are going to print on Friday. So we're really close. We're super close to opening. We're gonna start getting customers soon. I'm super excited. Uh, today I got a great look at the school, and it's nearly to completion. I am so happy with the progress so far. I took off all this kind of tacky sticky stuff that was on the windows of the school which I didn't even realize it made the windows look like this weird checker shape and it was actually just a sticker filter which you peel right off and now I've got just smooth glass windows that you can see through. In Japan people want a lot of privacy so sometimes they'll make their windows either the bubble glass or of checkered glass. I hate that. I hate that. I'm, I'm not trying to hide anything from anybody. If they absolutely want to peek in they can see me teaching class there. Even with my normal everyday life, I mean aside from the bathroom, I really don't care if people want to peek in. They're gonna either end up watching me exercise, work on a video, or plan for my school. In general though, Japan is a very, very private country. Even if you go to social media within Japan, a lot of people haven't put their actual picture and instead they'll put a cartoon character or a small, small, tiny postage stamp picture of themselves or they'll do it in such a way in which they cover up their face, the laughing or covering up. Now that also comes from Buddhist history and Buddhist tradition of when a woman laughs, she shouldn't show any bone and so hence they'll cover up their teeth. But it's also because of things like revenge porn where they'll take the face off of one other person and put it on the naked body of a porn star or something like that. There's also revenge porn for just, you know, taking people and putting them in the compromising positions as far as where they are in a picture or adding something to it. That doesn't really happen that much in Japan. It has happened before and there has actually been court cases that have dealt with it and very famous cases in the news. Uh, but for the most point, they're just exploited as, I guess, more of a a drama-filled rant about one of the things that can go on in Japan. Although you will hear of it happening in Japan, it's not really a common problem that constantly happens. People are pretty respectful of people's privacy. They don't bother you too much. And really, Japan's a great country as far as not being bothered for anything and everything you want to do. I think one of the reasons that I love this country so much is the fact that you can be who and whatever you want with little to no outside interference or people disrespecting your privacy. But at the same time, sometimes that leaves things overly private. It's funny, whenever my friends tell me they're busy, I always kind of laugh, because busy, busy with two kids and busy being a single guy with not even a wife married to, or the vice versa, not a husband, totally different. Being married, full-time job. Having kids, full-time job. Having one kid, full-time job. Having another kid, full-time job. I see some people in Japan with more than two kids, I wonder how they do it. What's the hardest aspect of raising kids in the city in Japan? Probably the fact that everything's so close yet so far away. I know that sounds weird, but pretty much what I mean is the fact that uh, you got everything within walking distance, but that's also the same reason that you should walk to get there. You know, it's good, it's healthy, it also saves money, it saves costs on transportation, but it does mean you end up walking everywhere, and when you walk everywhere with two little kids, you get super tired eventually. At first, you know, you start your day, you're walking all around to get them ready in the house, and then you hop on a bike, you get on that bike, and you bike them to school, you bike back, you start to walk to work after that, or at least you walk to the train, you take the train, that's easy, get there, get off the train, get to your job, and then you gotta do it all again to get home, and uh, you are beat afterwards. Oh man, today the big news on Twitter is all about JonTron. JonTron gets on Sargon of Akkad and lets everybody know that he hates SJWs. Why is anybody surprised by this, and why are they calling him a Nazi for saying that? Guys, let me tell you something about YouTube. Almost every YouTuber out there agrees with John's statement because if you were liberal before you started making YouTube videos, you were no longer liberal anymore after making them. With the amount of attacks that we constantly get in the comments sections from SJWs not allowing us to say damn near anything, you don't want to be called liberal anymore. John says that now he's a moderate to a temperate or somewhere middle to right leaning. I would say I'm probably just smack dab in the middle now. Uh, I'm not by any means a conservative, but I don't want to be called a liberal anymore either. It's shameful to me because, quite frankly, it gets a uh, connection to the SJWs, and I, I can't stand that stuff. 
you know, I'm not political in any sense of the word. My videos aren't very political. I don't really make a lot of political statements. I definitely don't use my Facebook for any kind of political rants. Neither do I use my Twitter for that. I will say, though, in the political warfare that goes on within YouTube, I stand firmly against all and every type of SJW. I stand against all and every type of censorship. I stand against anyone who would call John, John Tron, one of the best creators on YouTube, a Nazi. That's just ridiculous. There's nothing that he said that had any kind of Nazi sentiments into it. He didn't say, I hate Jews. He didn't say Hitler was right. He didn't say anything like that. Ridiculous. And guys, this is why he hates SJW. All right, here we go. We're here at Ikea now. We're getting some furniture for the school. Children's desks, adult desks, rolling chairs, desk chairs, shelves, and most importantly, floor mats for kids in like those kind of soft couch things that are like big colorful blocks. Anyway, let's go. There you go, all finished. We furnished an entire school. An entire school. 940 bucks, that's it. Every single piece of furniture we would ever need. Desks, kids' shelves, kids' chairs, everything. Perfect. We are set, man. Saturday it ships in, and uh, my school will almost be 100% complete by then. Amazing. Well guys, thank you again so much for tuning in for another Unrested Week or Week of Unrested or whatever title I decide to choose for this video series. I'm loving doing this and I'm loving making these for you guys. Uh, look for in the future a couple things coming out real soon. A Dark Side of Japan on Kodokushi. If you don't know what that is, that is people who end up divorced and alone and then they die alone. It's a really sad story. It's somewhat like Kiki Komori. But it's the salaryman version. It's the story of salarymen whose wives leave them while they're working. They pretty much take uh, everything they can and leave the man to die completely alone. It's, it's kind of an epidemic that's hitting Japan recently. Uh, on top of that, I'm going to do some brighter subjects, of course. Different places to explore around Japan and check out that aren't just your run-of-the-mill temples and shrines and museums. I'm going to hit up some places that are a little more crazy. On top of it, for a JFAC for the future... I am going to be covering starting your own business because it is something that I've finally reached the end process of and holy hell is it complicated. It takes a lot of explanation. It needs its own video. It's not something I can describe in one of these weekly videos. So I hope you tune in for all that. Until next time, I am Unrested with the questions you requested. This is a week in the life of Unrested. Have a good one.